So in this video, I'm going to look at some more Alex problems. Um, so let's look at this one. It says solve the compound inequality. Now remember, the word or um, is a union. It is all of the points from the first set and all of the points from the second set. They're all included, okay? So it's these points or these points, okay? Now let's go ahead and solve each one individually. So let me write the first one. Now it's just an inequality, solve it like an equation. Remember, the main thing you wanna remember is if you multiply or divide by a negative, flip the symbol. So that first one's pretty straightforward. Now let's look at the next one. So we're gonna uh, subtract three from both sides and divide by four. Now there were no divisions by any negative, so we did not have to turn any symbol. Now let's draw the pictures. Now for an or, we are looking for um, just the combination of everything that's written, okay? So greater than three looks like that, and negative four looks like that. Now if we put them on the same number line and color them in, if we combine the two, it looks like what I have here. The three, greater than three is just overlapped by the greater than negative four. So, so our answer is that W is greater than negative four. Now, if you put it in interval notation like they've asked, we would go from negative four in a parenthesis to designate that there's an open circle and we would go to infinity. So that is your answer in interval notation. Let's look at the next one. It says find an order pair that is the solution to the equation. So uh, we just need an x, y that is a solution that works. So let's pick one. Let's pick an x value of 1. Well, if we get uh, 1 minus 5y equals 5, so all I've done is replace the x value with 1. I would subtract 1 from both sides, divide by negative uh, 5. And so our ordered pair is when I picked one, I got out negative four fifths. Now, if you want to pick another pair, you can. You know, it didn't have to be one. It's just, you know, I picked one. Okay. So there is one solution to that equation. And if you plug that x, y value into the equation, you should get five. Let's take a look at this one. It says to find the midpoint M of the line segment joining the points A and B. So the midpoint formula is uh, the x's are the average of the x's. To average, you just add them and divide by 2. That's your new x. And you're going to do the same things for the y's. So we're going to get, if we average the x's, that's negative 4 plus 6 over 2, and 8 plus negative 2 over 2. So you're adding them so you don't change their signs. So we get 2 over 2 and 6 over 2, which is 1, 3. And if we look at the picture, it would probably be that. Okay. Okay, so that is how you find a midpoint when you're given two points. Now let's talk about x and y intercepts. To find the x-intercept, we're going to let y equal 0. To find the y-intercept, we're going to let x equal 0. So let's do the first one, the x-intercept. Wherever we see the y, we're going to put in a 0. So this is going to be negative 7x plus 5 times 0 equals 12. See how this term right here goes away. So you get negative 7x equals 12. So x equals negative 12 over 7. They technically put the negative in front or in, in the top. Now let's do our y-intercept. Now we're going to make the x equal 0. So negative 7 times 0 plus 5y equals 12. Do you see how that term goes away? So we get 5y equals 12. y equals 12 over 5. 
Now, I, I'm not sure exactly how Alex wants you to just input it like that, or you know, if they want you to write in an ordered pair, this is the, the, the number negative 12 seven zero, and this is the number zero 12 fifths. So if they did ask for them in an ordered pair sort of way. Let's look at this one. It says to find the de the a distance and give an exact answer, not a decimal approximation. So our distance formula is the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So our distance formula, we're going to subtract the x's. So it's going to be negative 4 minus 0 squared. We're going to subtract the y's. I think it's a good idea to label them. Let's label them. I didn't do that. x1, y1, x2, y2. And then our y2 is 6 minus a negative 1 would become plus 1. And that's going to be uh, negative 4 squared, which is 16. This is going to be 7 squared, which is 49. and just add them up before we try to take the square root. Now our exact answer is the square root of 65, but you always wanna to check to see if your square root, <coughs> excuse me, can be reduced. 65 is five times 13. They're both primes and not perfect squares. So that's as far as you can go. That is the exact answer. Let's do the next one. It says the area of a rectangle. So before we go further, remember area of a rectangle is length times width. So if we have some rectangle here, and I make an excellent rectangle, let's call that the length and the width. It says the area is 63. The length of the rectangle is 11 yards more than double the width. So that means if we double the width, we need to add 11, okay? So what do we know? Well. We know that 63 has to be the length, 2w plus 11, times the width. So let's find the dimensions. So we need to find the w, so then we can find both length and width. And so this would be 2w squared plus 11w. Now that's a quadratic. If we get it equal to 0, we can either factor it, or we can use the quadratic formula. So if you are unsure about factoring, um, feel free to use the quadratic formula. That works as well. <clears throat> now, if we um, try to factor it, let's see if it's factorable here. Um, you can use a slide and divide method. Let me kind of do that over here. That would be w squared plus 11w minus 126. Now, what made 126? Well, 126 is 2 times 63. Uh, 9 times 14, um, 7 times, let's see how many times 7 goes in there, 7 and 18 have the difference of 11 that I'm looking for, so that's W plus 18 and minus 7. I slid over a 2, so let's divide by 2, so we get W plus 9 and 2w minus 7. So that can go back in our equation now. We're ready to go back in. And now we're going to solve. We get w equals negative 9. Now it's a width, so we're going to throw that out. Or 2w equals 7, so w equals 7 over 2. That's the one we want. So our width is 3.5 yards, 7 over 2. And our length, we're going to double that, which would be 7 plus 11. So our length is 18. Now the way that we could check 18 times 3.5 better be that 63 that they were talking about. And it is, so we are done. So there is a word problem. Here is one where we're trying to rearrange the variable um, and solve for a particular variable. They want us to solve it for u, okay? 
So if we write this as r over 1, we can use rules of proportions and just cross multiply. So that's the first phase I'm going to get. So I get s minus t equals r times u minus 8. Now we're searching for this u, which is now stuck in a parenthesis. So distribution is going to be our way to get it out. So s minus t equals r u minus uh, 8 times r. Now we're going to get this term by itself. So let's add 8r to the other side. So we get s minus t plus 8r equals r u. Now the r is stuck to the u, which means multiplication. So the last thing we're going to do is divide both sides by r, and we're done. So u is s minus t plus 8r over r. OK, so there's that. Let's try this one. And I think this is our last one. This time they want us to solve for A. Now, I like the proportion thing that we did last time, but that means we have to have a, like, let me show you, A over B equals C over D. That's a proportion. So we got to get fraction equals fraction. You notice there's no pluses or minuses there. So let's combine these two fractions by getting a common denominator. I'm going to write it a little bigger over here. So we're going to take this one and multiply by B on top and bottom. We're going to take this one and multiply by A on top and bottom. Well, looking at it, I think I'm going to do that, but not yet. Let's move this to the other side. So the A one is by itself. I think that would be a little better route. And let's combine these two, okay? So I'm going to combine those two instead. There might be other ways to do this. I think this is the most efficient way. We're going to multiply this one by B on top and bottom, and this one by C on top and bottom. So we get B over C on the bottom. We get 5B minus 8C on top is 3 over A. Now we want to get the A by itself. So our rules of proportions say that we can cross multiply. Now let's put that in parentheses. So we get a times 5b minus 8c equals 3bc. Now remember, we want the a by itself. We want to solve for a, so don't distribute it in. We like that it's all by itself out here because now we can just divide both sides by 5b minus 8c and we are done. Again, there's probably multiple ways to do this, but this is the way that kind of occurred to me at this time, okay? So there are some Alex problems. Um, I hope this helps. Um, thanks for watching and have a good day. Bye.